The slender girl whirled through the hospitable doors. Missing the greeting as the guest announced to the hostess. Who was no less impressive in terms of her spectacular figure. Get dressed quickly. The screening starts in half an hour. And we still have to get there. Hi. Karina. What are you doing? What screening? Go where? The guest almost jumped with impatience. Actively gesticulating as if trying to expedite her friend. Snidely. She interrogated. What viewing? Couldn't you have asked smarter than that? Well. Not culinary. Dancing. Of course. Hurry up. We're running out of time. Why are you so slow today and not looking too fresh? All the more reason to hurry up. Do you want me to give you an express massage on your face? The hostess sighed and tried to explain the cause of her fatigue. Energetic Karina. She continued. I politely refused to participate in the screening. I'm sorry. But to be honest. I'd rather rest at home. My grandmother is not feeling well. Her blood pressure in the morning was off the charts. In my memory. I even had to call an ambulance. Just recently. The district therapist came and ordered a bunch of tests that need to be taken. Tomorrow. I will call an on-site lab for my grandmother so I don't have to go to the clinic. Come on. Karina. The guest twisted her temple. Showing what she thought of her companion. What are you doing? Lisa. Trying to set me up. I sent a video of our pair performance to the preliminaries. After I got the message that they liked the dance. I submitted an official application to the dance section. A duo. It's two people. If I'm the only one on stage. Maybe the jury won't even look at my number. Urgently. Look for a partner. Also. A doubtful event. Lisa could not contain her indignation and directly asked her friend. Shouldn't you have asked me if I wanted to perform and compete with others for who knows what? Seeing that Lisa did not succumb to flattery. Karina changed her tone to begging. Please. 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 And I don't often ask you for something. You're our crown program. Even if you wake up in the middle of the night. You'll perform perfectly. You and I make a perfect team. I can't find another partner as talented as you. Even if I have to look for a few years. Especially since we have a little over two hours. Before the screening began. The voices of the girls caught the attention of an elderly woman who emerged from the room to greet her guest. Hello. Karina. Good afternoon. She said. Smiling at Mrs. Ruby. Lisa. Concerned. Asked. Grandma. What happened? Are you sick? The woman shook her head reassuringly. It's all right. Lisa. You heard the doctor. He said to move around a little. If the pressure is more or less in the normal range. I just measured it. It's 130 over 95. It'll go down a little more. I could go to space. I'll go to the kitchen and make some tea. Karina. Eager to be of help. Proposed. Mrs. Ruby. How are you feeling? Maybe I'll run out for some medicine while Lisa is getting ready. The woman smiled and addressed Karina affectionately. Oh. Karina. As much of a vixen as you were and still are. No need to run anywhere for drugs. All that I need. I have. Apologizing for accidentally overhearing fragments of their conversation. She asked. But I did not listen. So you better answer. Why suddenly do you need to get Lisa so urgently? Karina's voice sounded pitiful. Almost with tears. As she explained. To see the dance contest. Mrs. Ruby. 
It's practically a matter of life and death for me. Lisa refuses. The woman looked intently at the picture. Folded her hands in a pleading gesture. Shifted her gaze to her granddaughter. And looked her in the eye. Sunshine. You should probably get some rest. I've worn you out with my historical illnesses. So. Girls. Let's go get some tea. Surely this is not the last contest that will be held. Karina. Knowing it was useless to argue with her friend's grandmother. Obediently kicked off her shoes and headed to the bathroom to wash her hands. However. While whipping foam in her palms. The girl couldn't stop thinking about arguments that would help convince her friend to join her in the contest. Gracefully seated at the table in her best friend's house, Karina turned again to her grandmother. Mrs. Ruby. You see. This pageant is not an ordinary one. Winning it would be a chance to change your life completely. Even though it's a regional competition. The winners get a trip to the capital city. To be honest. I understand that in the qualifying stage. You have to shine and distinguish yourself from the crowd of talents. Then there will be training. And during it. You can polish the movements almost to perfection. The main thing for me is to pass the first round. But to do it tastefully will be much more problematic. All the more so because I applied for a duo. I'm sorry I didn't consult with her. That's my mistake. I admit it. But I was acting in good faith, Lisa grumbled but no longer bitterly. You could have at least asked my opinion over the phone. You and I are always in touch. And you didn't even once hint. Feeling that her friend was not angry. Karina continued to persuade her. Mrs. Ruby. You see. Lisa has nothing to lose by going to this screening. It's her own pleasure. Dances will practice. Of course. If not satisfied. She no longer wants to compete. Then she may continue not to participate in the project. I promise that after the successful passage of the qualifying round. I will not insist on anything. I can swear to it. All I have to do is pass the tryouts. Please. Mrs. Ruby. Let Lisa come with me. Look at her. She's looking better already. She's got a little blush on her cheeks after tea. Help me out. She turned to her friend. Insistent. Karina knew how to persuade. And Lisa trembled as she looked at her grandmother and asked. Do you really feel well or only trying to reassure me? The woman smiled and reassured her. I'm really fine. Go on. My darling. Karina clapped her hands and ran up to hug her friend's grandmother. Thank you. Mrs. Ruby. You're great. The coolest grandmother in the world. And you're the foxy one. The woman smiled. And while her granddaughter was getting ready. She began to ask her guest how her family was doing. Lisa announced to her friend that she was ready. And the girls headed to the casting. They decided not to spend money on a cab. And on the way to the contest venue. Lisa unwittingly thought that no matter how it was. It couldn't be otherwise. After all. How could she refuse her best friend with whom they had shared joys and problems for more than half of her life? The girls met at a children's sports camp where they were in different squads and barely spoke to each other. However, after going through a curious situation, they became best friends. It was their passion for dancing that initially caused intense competition and later brought them closer together. In terms of wealth, the girl's parents were at about the same level and could afford to pay for expensive hobbies. Lisa and Karina were enrolled in prestigious choreographic studios in the city. Though in different districts. And attended training with sincere pleasure. During the summer holidays. Both girls missed their favorite activity. So. 
when the camp announced a talent contest. They decided to participate. Of course. Each of them prepared to perform a dance number. The camp management provided a place to practice for all participants. Although it was not very spacious. And time was limited. When the one-story building, standing separately, was unveiled, featuring a hall and a stage. It became evident to the competitors what each would focus on, it couldn't be denied that Karina didn't train poorly at her choreographic studio. But she couldn't help but assert that she excelled Lisa in certain elements. In contrast, Lisa dedicated herself wholeheartedly, even practicing outside of the scheduled rehearsals. Deep in her thoughts, Lisa walked for a prolonged period. At intervals, she would pause, jot something down in a small notebook, and then resume her journey. No matter how diligently Karina tried, she couldn't catch a glimpse of what Lisa was writing. The day of the contest arrived swiftly, and the hall was filled to the brim. Admittedly, there wasn't much entertainment in the camp. According to the draw, Lisa was scheduled to perform right after the magician kicked off the talent parade. Upon taking the stage, Lisa flawlessly commenced her performance to a familiar song. However, when the first lines of the second verse echoed from the speakers, the music abruptly ceased. A hush fell over the hall. Surprisingly, the girl on stage behaved as if nothing had happened and seamlessly continued her dance. She skillfully glanced into the hall, just as she had done before, as if peering into the soul of every spectator. Lisa's lips moved slightly, seemingly humming the song softly. It was a fantastical display, a testament to her ability to gracefully navigate the unexpected and maintain the beauty of her dance. The silence abruptly shattered from the back rows, where a lone voice boldly sang out popular lines. Soon, other spectators joined the unknown soloist, and virtually the entire auditorium, including not just teenagers but also a considerable portion of the staff, picked up the familiar lines. One of the contestants, awaiting his entrance backstage with a guitar, began playing a melody in response. As Lisa spoke, she gracefully made several deep curtsies to each side of the room, as though royalty graced the presence. She also acknowledged her unintentional accompanist backstage with smiles and air kisses. At that moment, a standing ovation erupted, culminating in Lisa being awarded the first prize. The silver prize went to a young man who played the guitar flawlessly, winning over many hearts. The honorable third place was bestowed upon Karina. Despite any inner disappointment, she found the strength to congratulate those who surpassed her, expressing gratitude to both the jury and the audience. Later that night, after lights out, Karina visited Lisa's house and summoned her for a talk. The winner didn't decline Karina's offer. And they retreated to the dining room to avoid nosy neighbors. Settling on a bench. A silence lingered. Prompting Lisa to inquire. Well. What did you want? Tell me quickly. I'm exhausted. Karina responded. I just wanted to express my admiration for your performance. You were outstanding. Handling that situation with remarkable poise. Your dance was flawless. Pleased with the praise from her peer. Who had a deep understanding of dance. Lisa confessed. In truth. It's not entirely my doing. Our coach emphasized that at any competition level. You must be prepared for anything. She once shared an example from the early 70s. When. At the figure skating world championships, a Soviet pair found themselves in a monstrous situation. The music abruptly ceased during their program. Yet the Soviet skaters skillfully cut through the ice with their skates, seamlessly continuing their routine as if nothing had happened. 
their secret lay in a unique practice regimen. As directed by their coach. The entire dance pattern, or whatever they called the sequence of elements. Adhered to a strict rhythm calculated in seconds. The absence of music in the middle of the performance wasn't a disaster for them. In fact. Their routine was much more challenging than what I faced today. Consider the difference in the scale of the competition. Besides. No one sang along with them. I had that inspirational example in my mind today too. The incredible support they received from the audience was palpable. Thrilled. Karina. Who initially sought a meeting to discover the secret. Now aspired to befriend her rival. Lisa. Lisa welcomed the opportunity to communicate. And they exchanged insights. Even devising a few dance routines to showcase on Parents' Day. The girls crafted a charming number that garnered a flurry of applause. Upon returning to the city. The friends continued their socializing. With Karina even joining the studio where Lisa trained. As they matured. The slender. Young. Perfectly dancing beauties inevitably attracted attention at discos. They entered the Institute of Culture together. Managing to study until the midpoint. However. Lisa's idyllic life took a tragic turn overnight when her parents perished in a car accident. The family car exploded shortly after leaving the mall parking lot. And despite the efforts of doctors. Nothing could be done to avert the devastating outcome. The sole factor that spared Lisa was her unwell state that day. Compelling her to stay home instead of accompanying her parents on a shopping trip. She lay on the couch beneath a warm woolen blanket. Sipping tea with lemon. Attempting to recover quickly from her ailments. When her grandmother. Mrs. Ruby. Appeared at the door using her daughter's key to enter the apartment. Lisa sensed that something irreparable had occurred. Mrs. Ruby embraced her granddaughter and softly conveyed the tragic news. Overwhelmed. Lisa sobbed. Haunted by the belief that if she had been with her parents, she might have detected something amiss and prevented their untimely demise. Despite her attempts not to distress her grandmother, Tears would involuntarily escape her eyes. During this harrowing period. Karina proved to be a true pillar of support for Lisa. Karina practically moved into Mrs. Ruby's apartment. Where Lisa had relocated after the tragedy. Karina refused to let her friends succumb to grief. Practically dragging her to the institute and ensuring she ate something. To the surprise of many neighbors. Karina's unwavering support played a crucial role in helping Lisa navigate the difficult days. The perpetrator responsible for the massacre of Lisa's parents was apprehended. And credit for the arrest didn't entirely belong to law enforcement agencies, which seemed somewhat passive in the investigation. Mrs. Ruby spared no expense to bring justice not only to the murderer but also to those who orchestrated the attack on her adored daughter and son-in-law whom she deeply cherished. Contrary to popular folklore, Mrs. Ruby sold her jewels, diligently financing the pursuit of justice. She harbored genuine fears for Lisa's psychological well-being. As even six months after the tragedy, the young girl's state of mind remained deplorable. Lisa couldn't forgive herself for surviving. And the mere thought of approaching the apartment where her parents once lived would send her into hysterics. Despite Mrs. Ruby's concerns. The girl vehemently refused to return to the place where she had once been happy. Mrs. Ruby. Recognizing the difficulty of the situation. Refrained from insisting. Acknowledging that if she were alone. The strain might have driven her to the brink of madness. Her granddaughter and the pursuit of justice for the criminals served as Mrs. Ruby's anchor to sanity. And Lisa clung to them with the support of her grandmother and Karina. Trying to navigate her new reality. Lisa faced a noticeable shake in her financial situation. 
after much contemplation. Mrs. Ruby decided to have a candid conversation with her daughter. I know we're facing a tough conversation. But I won't make any significant decisions without you. I understand you can't just discard the apartment. But renting it out doesn't sit right with me. I fear we might end up with ruin instead of money. What do you think? Grandma? You're right. It's too challenging for me to stay there. I haven't found a suitable job yet. And I don't want to burden you. I can't sit on your neck. Lisa responded. Mrs. Ruby hugged her granddaughter tightly. Relieved that Lisa didn't break down during the emotionally difficult conversation. And initiated the whirlwind process of selling her daughter's apartment. Throughout the trying days. As Mrs. Ruby sought justice and dealt with other issues. Karina supported her friend. Despite Karina's attempts to involve Lisa in various entertainment events. Lisa remained withdrawn. Karina had met someone at a disco and made sure Lisa spent most of her free time with him in a relatively normal state. Lisa harbored a slight grudge. Feeling that Karina was hiding her suitor. But clarity dawned after a serious conversation with her grandmother. One day. Mrs. Ruby. Aged beyond her years after the tragic events. Sat down opposite Lisa. Addressing her with a gentle gaze. My little girl. I know you had to grow up very suddenly. But that was fate's way. What I wanted to tell you is that the fact you and Karina are seeing less of each other is inevitable. It was bound to happen one day. You can't be with her everywhere. Otherwise. It's something abnormal. Don't be offended that she doesn't introduce you to her bow. Indignantly. Lisa objected. So. I'm not going to steal the guy from Karina. Grandma smiled. I didn't think so. Karina probably doesn't suspect you of bad intentions. But she instinctively tries to spend more time with her boyfriend and doesn't involve you in her meetings to avoid dispersing his attention. Men are fickle. Not all of them. But alas. Very many. I don't want you to be offended or too gullible. I didn't tell you. But you have a right to know, your parents were murdered by people they thought were good friends. Just remember that you can only trust yourself completely and unconditionally. Especially be careful when you're in love. Happiness appreciates silence. The less we brag about. The better. Lisa nodded. Absorbing the wisdom shared by her grandmother. Everything fell into perfect alignment. The lingering resentment toward her friend dissipated, evaporating like morning dew under the gentle rays of understanding. Liza meticulously recalled every word spoken by her sole family member. The girl who had always been a beacon of admiration. Her grandmother. Now. A twinge of shame crept in. Realizing she had left her beloved relative unattended. As the right stop loomed ahead. It seemed imprudent to turn back. All that remained was the meticulous fulfillment of her friend's request and a swift return home. Fragments of triumphant. Sorrowful. And cautionary memories sliced through Lisa's mind during the journey to the casting. Before reaching the destination. The girl's contemplations were interrupted by Karina's enthusiastic monologue. Brimming with anticipation for success. It won't be long before we grasp our diplomas. Ushering in a new life in the capital. The prospects will be grander than in our humble hometown. Karina exclaimed. Revealing her usual ambitious and spontaneous nature. Accustomed as she was to her best friend's drive. Lissa was still taken aback. She interjected. Defending the honor of their small motherland. You're quite self-assured. Referring to our city. With over a million inhabitants. As dense doesn't seem right. Besides. How would your boyfriend feel about that? This unexpected question left Karina visibly flustered. To sidestep it. 
she swiftly redirected the conversation toward the upcoming performance. Approaching the contest venue, Lisa's unease intensified. The line to the old cinema building. Now hosting the casting. Snaked halfway through the long stop. Two realizations dawned upon her, the competition was undeniably fierce. And the casting lacked optimal organization. However, after enduring an hour amidst the shared suffering of aspiring dancers, the seemingly stagnant line suddenly quickened its pace. As Karina and Lisa patiently waited for their turn, the reason for this sudden acceleration became evident. Just as they were about to showcase a couple of movements, a man seated at the center of the table and among the jury exclaimed, Well done. Bravo. That's enough. Wait in the next room. We need to discuss the concept for your further development as a duo. There's water. Tea. Healthy sweets. Take a short break. And you'll be invited for an interview. Lissa. Who had reluctantly agreed. Driven by her friend's persistence to participate in the initial stage. Was indifferent. On the other hand. Karina was on the verge of trembling with anxiety. Fearing a dismissal of their dance duo project. Sensing Karina's tension. Lisa whispered softly. It seems I've fulfilled my mission. Now I can decline any further participation in the contest to make room for those who truly desire it. Relieved and in high spirits. Thanks to her best friend's support. Karina entered the impromptu waiting room. Originally designed as a cafe when the building was a movie theater. The spacious room now accommodated about 15 fortunate girls. Including Karina and Lisa. The atmosphere buzzed with nervous energy as a gracious middle-aged brown-haired woman named Zlata oversaw the distribution of provisions. She smiled sweetly at the contestants. Offering tea. Water. And treats resembling homemade marshmallows. Lisa declined the treat. But Karina. With a polite thank you to Zlata. Accepted. She whispered to her friend. Why are you holding back? There's a reason for all this. She's probably observing. Scrutinizing the contestants to gauge their characters. Those who are rude won't likely advance beyond the qualifying round. Look how she's carefully assessing everyone. Especially those in dance teams. Psychological compatibility is crucial. She's noting which group appears more promising. But you, Karina. You're a brilliant strategist. My friend. Karina responded with a knowing smile. True. True. You just don't know how badly I want to escape to the capital. My parents keep nagging me to study better and not stay out late. Lissa remained silent. Desperately missing the times when the whole family was together. Fortunately. The conversation took a pleasant turn when an acquaintance from the choreography studio approached them. And they reminisced about the past. The exchange provided a welcome distraction from the tense situation. The number of contestants in the audience showed no sign of diminishing. Instead, new faces seamlessly replaced those departing for their interviews. Soon, an old friend of Karina and Lisa's received an invitation for an interview. And shortly after, it was their turn to enter the room. In the room, a man lounged on the couch, exuding an aura that immediately left an unfavorable impression on Lisa. His manner suggested a condescending gaze, looking down on them as if they were beneath him. With a subtle stretch in his vowels, he introduced himself, saying, I am Anthony. The producer of this project. To be candid. I've been monitoring your moves on the webcam. And I must say. It's impressive. Your duo exhibits remarkable coherence. Harmony. And plasticity. It's as if you move effortlessly. Free of tension. Thoroughly enjoying your performance. And that's highly valued. 
Without further ado, I'm prepared to extend a unique offer. I'm offering you a position at a club in the capital. Naturally, there will be a probationary period initially. But all the tips you earn are yours. Of course. There's a bit to learn. This place has its own nuances. However, I believe you girls are talented and capable. And you'll handle it with ease. Lisa couldn't hide her surprise. Tips? I wonder. Can members of a dance team receive tips? Karina. Already envisioning a grand capital hall applauding her. Suddenly pondered the reasonable question raised by her friend. Anthony chuckled and clarified. Emphasizing the contestant's age. I thought they didn't allow minors in our casting. So where did this David suddenly come from? Dancing will have to be in a club. The customers there are generous and enthusiastic. The producer refrained from specifying the nature of the job. Leaving Lisa to deduce it. Realizing the urgency to leave. Lisa. With Karina under her arm. Politely excused themselves. Saying. Sorry to take up your time. But we have to go. Contrary to their fears. Neither Anthony nor anyone else detained the girls. They walked calmly out of the former cinema and into the street. Despite the always cheerful demeanor. Karina felt a wave of discomfort. Realizing she was on the verge of trouble. Trying to reassure her friend. Lisa said. Don't worry. There will be more normal castings. Meanwhile. Let's catch a cab. I'm genuinely concerned about my grandmother. Karina. Feeling uneasy but reluctant to refuse. Had initially planned an unscheduled shopping trip to lift her spirits. While riding in a cab. Lisa suggested. Let's not scare my grandmother with the truth about this casting. Just say it didn't work out. That's true enough. She doesn't need to know the details. Karina readily agreed. Of course. My friend. I don't like to think I could be so easily fooled. I should have checked this organizer more thoroughly. Now I'll be wiser. Thank you. Lisa. For coming with me. Lisa smiled at her friend. Although she couldn't shake the unease in her heart. Honestly. She pondered the lengths to which she had gone for the sake of this deceptive contest, leaving her grandmother alone. Lisa couldn't shake the worry that gnawed at her. Fearing the possibility of something bad happening during her absence. To her immense relief. Mrs. Ruby seemed relatively okay upon her return. However. The woman promised her granddaughter that a comprehensive examination would follow soon. Navigating the local clinic's waiting list proved to be a challenge. The cardiologist had a three-month waiting period. The neurologist was on vacation. And there was no endocrinologist available. In reality. Only an ENT therapist. Optometrist. And gynecologist were actively working. Lisa. Recalling Karina's remarks about her hometown couldn't help but sigh in agreement. The city center's polyclinic boasted minimal doctors. Despite the limitations, Lisa arranged for her grandmother to visit a private pay clinic. Insistent on prioritizing her grandmother's health, Lisa proposed. Let's use the money left over from the apartment sale. You won't have to wait so long to see the doctors. Her grandmother had no choice but to comply. And the saga of clinic visits, tests, and examinations unfolded. Amidst the flurry of activities leading up to graduation, Lisa didn't find time to scrutinize the details mentioned in Mrs. Ruby's discharge. Mrs. Ruby, in high spirits, reported to her granddaughter that all detected abnormalities were merely senile changes. Lisa scoffed at the notion. Dismissing it as nonsense. You're always young. She argued. 
However. Mrs. Ruby's health wasn't as rosy as she portrayed. Alongside the diagnosed diabetes. The cardiologist expressed concern about her heart condition. Despite the suggestion to seek a second opinion. Mrs. Ruby diligently followed all recommendations. Lisa was pleased to observe that the feverish blush had vanished from her grandmother's cheeks. Even though the underlying health concerns remained a source of unease. Having undergone surgery. It appeared that a new. Happier chapter of life awaited Mrs. Ruby. After receiving their diplomas. Lisa and Karina decided to embark on a new venture. Opening their own choreographic studio. Unlike typical studios. Theirs would cater not only to children but also to adults eager to embrace the joy of dance. The girls adopted an unconventional approach. Offering a mix of modern dances and choreographing movements for couples during wedding compositions. A concept inspired by a movie they had once seen. Lisa. Inspired by her grandmother's expertise. Decided to spend her free time learning the art of sewing. Recognizing that promoting the studio wouldn't be a quick endeavor. The girls believed that every saved or earned penny would prove beneficial. Surprisingly. Crafting became a captivating outlet for Lisa. Providing solace from her worries. Mrs. Ruby. A patient and knowledgeable teacher. Gladly shared her wisdom with her granddaughter. Within a few months, the studio surpassed the owner's most daring hopes and began to enjoy success. Although substantial net profit was still elusive, the concept proved to be a success. Lisa found joy in doing what she loved at home, alongside her best friend. Most importantly, the thought that her grandmother no longer had to bear the burden of financing their small family warmed Lisa's soul. For almost a year. Everything seemed well. Then. Unexpectedly. Mrs. Ruby was gone. Lisa returned home to find her grandmother lying on the couch as if in peaceful rest. Quietly. She walked over. Intending to cover her with a blanket. The apartment had grown quite chilly since the central heating had been turned off. And the frost had returned. As Lisa approached her grandmother, intending to cover her with a blanket, a scream of horror erupted from the depths of her soul. It became painfully apparent that Mrs. Ruby was no longer sheltered from the cold, and the excitement she had endured proved fatal. In the tumult of saying goodbye to her only relative, Lisa sought refuge in the studio. Immersed in dance movements and closely watching the dancers, she attempted to drown her pain. Meanwhile, Karina, seemingly unaffected, tried to temper her joyous expressions, mindful not to irritate her grieving friend. As time passed, she visited Lisa less frequently, understanding that nobody wants to engage with a sorrowful soul. Lisa immersed herself in her sewing, surrounded by the fabric her grandmother had accumulated. In these moments, it felt as though the girls held conversations with their beloved relative. It became Lisa's way of coping. A means to not forget the hardship but to alleviate it. One night, losing track of time in her sewing, Lisa neglected safety rules. The doorbell rang. And she, assuming it was Karina, whom she hadn't seen all day, opened the door without looking through the peephole. To her surprise, she was met by an unfamiliar older man holding a box of cake. Stammering, Lisa said, You must be mistaken, and began to close the door. However, the man thwarted her intentions and caught her off guard with an unforeseen revelation. Hello, Lisa. How mature you've become. And yet you don't recognize me. He remarked, unfazed. Lisa replied. Well. I'm not proud. I'll introduce myself. 
My name is Mr. Gerald. I'm your grandfather. A mischievous grin spread across the girl's face as she recalled her mother's words. Realizing their connection ran deeper. We're more closely related than you think. I left your grandmother when your mother and I attended school together. According to my knowledge. I only visited a couple of times. Mr. Gerald explained. He continued. Wishing Lisa the best of luck and bidding her goodbye. To ensure he wasn't easily dismissed. Mr. Gerald strategically placed his foot on the threshold. Preventing Lisa from slamming the door shut. Remaining resolute. Lisa attempted to resist. But Mr. Gerald spoke in a stern tone. Sending shivers down her spine. You. Granddaughter. Don't be hasty. This apartment partly belongs to me. I never divorced Ruby. She probably didn't care about that formality. In a dismissive tone. He urged Lisa to move aside and let him pass. Stunned. Lisa mustered all her strength to throw the door chain and defiantly declared. I'm going to call the police. Unperturbed. The man smirked and encouraged her. Saying. Yes. Call all you want. Better yet. Make sure you tell them the truth. I'll give them a cake and inform them that my granddaughter won't let me through. It's my signature cake from my childhood town. I'm sure the cops will love it. I'm just afraid it's melting a little bit. So you better hurry up. Tell them it's an emergency, Grandpa wants to buy you a drink. Go ahead. I'll wait here for you. With that. He lifted his foot. And Lisa quickly slammed the door. Locking it. She stood frozen in doubt. Contemplating whether she should indeed call the police and explain the bizarre situation involving an unknown relative at her doorstep. He wasn't threatening or assaulting me. At least not directly. Just to be safe. The girl stepped back from the door and dialed her friend Karina's number. After briefly explaining the situation. Lisa asked for help. Help me out. Karina. Your cousin seems to know someone in the police. Can you ask if it's not too difficult? What should I do? She inquired. Got it. Don't worry about it. Give me ten minutes and wait for my call. Karina assured her. True to her word. Karina called back. Excited and a little earlier than expected. She happily reported. Wait. I'll be there soon with backup. Open the door only after I tell you. Okay. Lisa breathed a sigh of relief and expressed her gratitude. Thank you. Karina. I owe you one. Curious. The girl tiptoed to the door to see what would happen. Soon. She heard soft male voices. Though it was challenging to discern the details due to the excellent noise insulation she insisted on during the renovation. Fortunately. The suspense didn't last long. There was a knock at the door. And Karina. Playfully imitating a cartoon character. Said. I'll open up. The bear is here. In her normal voice. She added. It's okay. Lisa. Let them into the apartment. Accompanying Karina was her cousin Victor. Whom Lisa knew a little. Out of nowhere. The grandfather and an unfamiliar man named Mr. Dennis appeared. Karina introduced him to Lisa. Saying. This is Mr. Dennis. One of our best lawyers. He'll help resolve the matter with the least amount of effort. Mr. Dennis courteously bowed his head and spoke in a pleasant baritone voice. Though under such unexpected circumstances. It's a pleasure to meet you. If you don't mind. Let's all sit down at the table. Citizen Gerald will calmly state the essence of his claims and show the documents he has. Lisa. If you don't mind. 
I'll ask you to prepare receipts for the payment of the apartment for the last few months or any other relevant documents. The lawyer's voice fascinated Lisa. And despite the unexpected intrusion of her grandfather, she found herself somewhat relieved at the prospect of a resolution. Despite the mishap, it led to a rather unexpected pleasant acquaintance. While Lisa went to the other room to retrieve the receipts, Mr. Dennis took the opportunity to examine the passport her grandfather had given him. After studying it, he handed the document to Victor. Take a look with your own eyes. Something about the marriage stamp looks strange to me. Mr. Dennis pointed out. Karina's cousin carefully examined the stamp and proceeded to take pictures of all the pages of the passport. Mr. Gerald raised an eyebrow in surprise. But before he could say anything, the lawyer posed an unexpected question. Which store did you buy the cake from? He inquired. The man hesitated briefly before responding. You can't buy it here in my hometown. The only confectionery bakes according to old recipes. I went in yesterday before I left and bought some. Mr. Dennis nodded in confirmation and remarked. It seems that you and I, Dennis Alexevich, are fellow countrymen. I haven't been to my native land in maybe five years. Who's in the candy store now? The man's face revealed a momentary pause. And then he responded, the same Mrs. Clara. With her eyelashes glued on and her usual jokes in response to complaints about the order on the counters. More dirt. Wider faces. Mr. Gerald nodded. Seemingly acknowledging the familiarity. The lawyer. Delighted as if he had received the happiest news. Suggested. We ought to go down and see how the old man trades. Yeah. He's joking. Mrs. Clara has been resting in the ground for 15 years. I doubt if you're related to him. Even if you were. According to the receipt he kindly provided for the last six months. You're not even registered here. You have no right to this living space. If you think of suing. It's only a waste of time and money. So. Here's a good piece of advice for you. Get out of here and do not appear again. Otherwise. Don't even think twice about it. I'll find an article under which you can be held administratively or even criminally liable. The elderly man sneezed. But with surprising pride. He grabbed his document and headed towards the exit. Lisa shouted after him. Cake takeaway. I don't need anything from you. Mr. Gerald did not resist or refuse. He almost ran out of the apartment. A full tenant status that he had failed to achieve. Lisa was beyond excited and only agreed to let her saviors go after an impromptu feast. She sincerely thanked her friend, her cousin, and the lawyer, who had masterfully relieved her of her problems. Then, she posed a direct question to Mr. Dennis. Please name your fee. She requested. The man laughed and replied. Actually. You can just call me by my first name. I may be seven years older. And when I'm addressed so formally. I feel like an old man. In general. I think that the home cooked meal and this curiosity case. You have already paid for everything. Karina joined in. Picking up on the lawyer's laughter. Cleverly. Dennis. You've exposed him. Victor. What did you do with the passport photos of the swindler? Her cousin confessed honestly. It was just to keep it respectable. You thought you'd scare him by doing that. And it seemed to work. When the guests left. Lisa did not think that the strange incident would have a pleasant continuation. However. The next morning. Her dentist paid her a visit. Bringing coffee and cake from a fairly prestigious coffee house. He explained that it was a sign of apology for the fact that yesterday he couldn't try the cake. 
grateful. Lisa thanked the lawyer and, feeling a little awkward, offered to have breakfast together. During the conversation at the table, Lisa had the feeling that she had known Dennis all her life. And he understood her from half a word. They even shared the same musical tastes. A connection she didn't have with Karina. Who couldn't stand either rock or classical music. Lisa wasn't even surprised that communication with Dennis had become a necessity for her, a real addiction. One day. During their regular date. Dennis reluctantly. As if embarrassed. Shared a complicated story of his life. He revealed that he had been married and, after the divorce, moved from his humble hometown to the metropolis where he once studied. That's how, until I met you, I lived, worked, rented an apartment near the office, and never even thought that I would one day fall in love so much. He confessed, encouraged by their deepening connection. A girl once suggested to her beloved man to move in with her. And he agreed. To confirm the seriousness of his intentions. He gave her a thin ring and proposed to get married closer to summer. Can you imagine what a beautiful ceremony could be organized? No winter has its own charms. But we can't have a spectacular photo shoot in the countryside. I so want you to remember our wedding day forever. He expressed with Karina becoming more of a work acquaintance. Lisa saw Dennis almost exclusively at work. One day, entering the tiny office they proudly called the coaching room, she found her best friend in tears. What happened? Did she get hurt? Call a cab to the hospital. Lisa exclaimed. Karina shook her head. I'm sad. It's just that no one needs me. Lisa was stunned. What are you talking about? I need you. There's practice in an hour. And everyone will be waiting for you. Don't be sad. Karina. In tears. Expressed. Now I don't even have time to talk to me. I have no one to go out with. To dance. Just to relax. I'm so lonely. Tactfully. Lisa did not ask where he went. The mysterious bow that so captivated her friend's eyes. Instead, she offered. You know, let's go to my place tonight. Dennis said he would be working late. He has to go somewhere. You and I can relax, we'll have a beauty salon at home. Get some masks and so on. The girl's merry talk was in full swing when Dennis returned to the apartment. He greeted Karina in a friendly manner. Kissed Lisa. And after some thought. Invited the girls to a cafe of Italian cuisine. Since that evening. He also began to take an active part in ensuring that the friend of his beloved did not feel neglected and lonely on weekends. The groom took the bride and her friend to the country park for a picnic with Shashlik or rented a house at a tourist resort where they could go skiing and snowboarding. Lisa felt genuinely relieved that her friend had ceased shedding tears. Moreover, there was a positive turn of events in the business. The girls even expanded the studio by opening a branch, confidently assigning all the paperwork to Dennis. Lisa daydreamed about the day her sweetheart would take her to the registry office. She diligently researched the registry office schedule, ensuring she was well informed about all the necessary formalities. Eagerly anticipating that fateful day, she patiently waited for the relationship to be formalized. Despite the man's considerate affection, as the last spring month passed its halfway point, he refrained from discussing the relationship's official status. For a while, Lisa continued to view the world through rose-colored glasses, blissfully unaware of any impending issues. However, one night, during a dinner party, she had to excuse herself from the company of her fiancé and best friend to take a phone call from one of the girl's mothers in the studio. Upon returning to the table, 
Lisa found herself on the verge of causing a scene. Upon witnessing Karina boldly assume her rightful place. Kissing Dennis. The deceived bride had to muster all her composure to calmly address the situation. So. Dennis. If I understand correctly. You're moving in. Please give me your set of keys. I'll gather your belongings and let you know when you can pick them up. Unfazed. Karina. Rummaging through her purse. Responded in a nonchalant tone. By the way. I'm glad everything has cleared up. Yes. Dennis and I are together now. But let's not turn this into a tragedy. Okay. I hope our business won't suffer due to any potential resentment. Let's remain professional. I know it'll be hard for you to see me. So I suggest we stay away from each other until you cool off. It's kind of scary. You're about to have steam coming out of your ears. Karina smiled victoriously. Retrieved a bunch of keys from her bag. And. Taking the apartment keys from the carabiner. Continued laying out their plans. The studios will be divided like this, the one closest to my house will be mine. You can practice in the branch. The rent will be minimal. And you can keep half the profits. The rest will be accumulated in accounts for future development. I think it's reasonable and fair. Lisa was taken aback. Wait. Karina. Are you kidding me? Why should I suddenly have to pay rent and give away profits? I'm actually the owner. Just like you. Dennis tried to calm down the frustrated Lisa who not only lost a substantial part of her income due to her gullibility but had also just quit. Scandals. We already have people looking over our shoulder. Kitten. You know how it is. Don't blame yourself. You're a wonderful person. Talented and beautiful. You're going to be fine. Let's stay friends. Karina nodded to Dennis. Let's build a civilized relationship in the new circumstances. I think you're too dramatic. Of course. As a coach. You have no equal in dance. But in business. Sorry. You don't know anything. Karina continued. Without looking. You signed papers such as the general power of attorney and changes in the Articles of Incorporation. Dennis and I will be running the business. And you do what you do best. Show people how to dance. Lisa. Recalling that she had signed several sheets of paper without reading them. Fueled by anger. Exclaimed. So. In fact. You're knocking the ground out from under me. Depriving me of the joy of doing what I love. You're trying to look like benefactors. Oh. Good for you. But keep in mind that I'm not going to give up. I will carefully study all the documentation. And I won't allow you to walk all over me. Grabbing her purse. Lisa stormed out. Ignoring calls to stop from the traders left in the apartment. She darted from one room to another. Transforming the bathroom and kitchen into temporary storage spaces for Dennis's belongings. Hastily grabbing his things. She threw them onto the bed. Tying the corners of the bedspread crosswise. She pulled the unexpectedly heavy knot toward the door. Intending to shove it out onto the doorstep. As soon as her ex-fiancé arrived. Having finished clearing Dennis's possessions from the apartment. Lisa rushed to study all the documents that were only available at home. The more the deceived girl immersed herself in reading occasionally checking the meanings of terms online. The more horrified she became. She realized how naive and insanely trusting she had been. Recalling her grandmother's wise words about not trusting anyone unconditionally. The blow from Karina. Whom she considered her best friend. And her fiancé was unimaginable. Even in the most nightmarish dream. The power of attorney Lisa had given Dennis played a malicious trick. Exploiting her boundless trust. He legally arranged everything. 
leaving the girl with almost no rights to the studio. She was no longer the owner but a salaried employee, unable to arrange a vacation or set a convenient work schedule without Karina's consent. Though Lisa could quit her job, she decided to persevere for at least a month, preparing escape routes to rent a room and establish a new studio. With Dennis arriving to collect his things, Lisa refrained from speaking to him. Once the bundle was on the landing, she hurriedly closed the door. Visiting the studio felt like hard labor. And within a week, the flow of clients noticeably decreased. Even regular students began to drop out. Lisa blamed herself. Thinking her classes lacked the courage and spark that ignites talent in people shy to dance. However, one of the first regular visitors opened her eyes to the truth. Karina shamelessly lured customers to her room. Employing any method without reservation. The ex-girlfriend spread innocuous lies. Claiming Lisa was planning to leave. Making her unavailable for classes. Thanking the visitor for the valuable information. Lisa bid farewell to the clients and headed to the coach's room. She wanted to swiftly gather her things. Return home. And drown her sorrows in a drink. Nevertheless. She resolved to communicate her decision to her ex-girlfriend first. Promptly carrying out her intention. The response message on her phone's messenger app completely threw Lisa off balance. The photo displayed a decorated vignette, an invitation to the solemn marriage of Karina and Dennis. Accompanied by a mocking. Plus one. Before she could catch her breath. Another message followed. We really want you not to be mad at us and share in this moment of our joy. The uniformly dressed Karina and Dennis. Lisa was shocked. What had she done to deserve such humiliation? Why were the people she had considered her support pushing her into an abyss of despair? Had she deeply misjudged them? Feeling lost and unsure of what to do. Lisa realized that being alone in such a state was not an option. She needed to be amidst people to keep the darkest thoughts at bay. She headed to the nearest park. Where there were many people yet no one intruding on her personal space. If Lisa's state of mind could influence nature. The leaden gray sky might strike with lightning. A prickly rain would sting people hiding from the bad weather. And gusts of wind would tear the tents of established outdoor cafes. However. Reality was almost the opposite. The mood of one poor. Humiliated girl made no difference. The sun shone brightly in the sky. Casting a pleasant shade from the young greenery on the trees. The park appeared superb. As if an unknown florist had put their heart into creating a magnificent landscape. The park felt much cozier than Lisa remembered. And she sat down on a bench. Attempting to detach herself from the turmoil that had nearly led her to a dark edge today. She felt as if she were performing on a stage. And the music had abruptly stopped. Only this time. The girl had no idea what dance she was executing or what kind of melody was playing. All that remained was to freeze in confusion and desperately try to figure out what to do next. Right in front of the spot where the girl settled. Some late variety. Proud Tulip stood. Looking. If not like winners in life. Then certainly like masters of the flower bed. I wish I had their confidence. Thought Lisa. Her thoughts were suddenly interrupted by a man's voice. And why are you shedding tears? Lisa. Who hadn't noticed her tears. Had no intention of talking to anyone and didn't respond to the curious stranger. He left. But soon returned and sat down beside the melancholic Lisa. The stranger held an ice cream cone and a block of cotton candy in each hand. The man began to explain patiently. Stopping the girl. Who was about to jump up and run away. Don't be frightened. Lisa. I happen to know you. Even though we don't know each other. I work for a private detective who was commissioned by your grandmother to work on solving your parents' case. 
since we seriously feared that scoundrels would use any means to influence the course of justice. I was assigned by my boss to keep an unofficial eye on you. So, you could say you've been my ward for months. Lisa took a closer look at the man. He might have crossed her path at some point. But she couldn't be sure. The stranger, smiling, introduced himself as Mr. Sampson, an employee of the private agency Secret. After the introduction, he handed Lisa a cone and cotton candy, explaining, in the movies, they said that ice cream seems to make you feel more cheerful. But I thought you might have a sore throat. So I got cotton candy too. I. For example. Just love it. In a bad mood. Lisa replied to Samson not too kindly. You can enjoy it. I try not to eat that type of sweetness. The man smiled and said. Well. No. I don't really. I can't eat that much myself. Wait until I treat those boys who count the change at the kiosk. And I'll be back. Lisa listened and waited for Samson. Not knowing why. The assistant detective asked. You can consider it a professional interest. And if you don't like it. You don't have to answer. But still. Why are you on such a beautiful day in this beautiful park? crying. Lisa grinned and decided to share her misfortune. The day could have been considered wonderful if not for one circumstance. Today, two traders took the audacious step of inviting me to the wedding. My ex-fiancé was, as they put it, solemnly marrying my former best friend. The invitation is so mocking. Addressing it to just two people. They know I have no one to go with. They're mocking me. I just don't understand why. I do not know why. Lisa briefly recounted the sad story of her failed love to Samson. The man who listened intently. The detective even let out a whistle. Lisa. You may not believe it. But my gut tells me that someone has eloquently set up your acquaintance with Dennis. You say he seemed to know everything about you. To understand you from half a word to share all your interests. It's very smooth. Listen. What was the surname of Victor? Who took passport photos of your grandfather? Lisa answered. Wondering why he needed this information. Samson did not hide it. You know. Your grandmother was more than generous. I got a very large sum for my work. Much more than I expected. I found out later from my boss that Mrs. Ruby had even sold some of her things to pay me back. You know. I was ashamed at the time. Well. I was young. And I needed the money badly. So I didn't pay your grandmother back part of my fee as I wanted to do initially. I saw you today. And that old feeling of shame came over me. So. I guess now I have to sort of pay back the change in the form of finding out the truth about this grandfather and your ex-fiancé. If you want. Come to the agency in two days. I'll give you a business card with the address and phone numbers. Or we can meet at any other place of your choice. During her conversation with Samson. Lisa had suspicions that her tastes were exactly the same as Dennis's. She looked at the card handed to her and answered. Perhaps the day after tomorrow. I will come to the agency. It would be more convenient for me. Lisa walked home. Contemplating how strangely her acquaintance with Dennis was developing. It was as if the man knew exactly the way to her heart. He even used exactly the perfume she liked. With a top note of lemon and a persistent trail. After all. Lisa was not. At first glance. The most obvious choice for a serious, successful lawyer. As Dennis seemed to be. Additionally. Several times Lisa noticed that he wrinkled his nose contemptuously. During her dance to the tunes of her favorite band. A group that Dennis claimed to adore. 
His face would involuntarily contort into a grimace when asked why. The man convincingly attributed it to sudden cramps or headaches. Or at least that's what Lisa believed at the time. Upon closely examining her memories of the recent past, the jilted bride discovered more and more oddities. By the time she arrived home, Lisa was convinced that Dennis, having gathered as much information about her as possible, had done everything in his power to gain her trust and settle into her apartment under the guise of a fiancé. Undeniably, he had succeeded effortlessly. However, Lisa couldn't fathom his true motive. She didn't keep any cash in the apartment. Just a sewing machine. Fabric remnants. And the family's jewelry collection. Those were the only valuables she possessed. Driven by an honorable fear. Lisa checked her stash. To her relief. A pair of antique earrings and a ring were in place. The girl calmed down a bit. But the next morning. Taking the jewels with her. She went to the bank to secure them in a safe deposit box. After all, she had no guarantee that Dennis hadn't taken care of a duplicate key. Besides, Karina might have done the same. After the bank visit, Lisa planned to call a locksmith to change the lock. Just to be on the safe side. After signing a contract to rent a safe deposit box and securing her jewelry there, Lisa decided to withdraw the accrued interest from her account for some cash on hand. However, the financial institution employee dropped a bombshell on Lisa. Revealing. Sorry, but by your power of attorney. All funds were withdrawn from the account yesterday. Trying not to shout. Lisa sought clarification. Tell me. And to whom did I write the power of attorney? Can you check? The employee didn't refuse the strange client and provided a name that Lisa did not expect to hear. It wasn't Dennis who took the money. As she assumed. But her former best friend. Thanking the operator. Who inquired compassionately whether everything was alright. Lisa wandered home. It suddenly became as clear as day to her that it was Karina who could so accurately orient Dennis about all her passions and dislikes. Not only did her best friend know about the naive Lisa, but it was at her instigation that Dennis presented himself as an ideal. She had believed in incredible harmony and love at first sight. And now there was an explanation for many things. The fact that Karina pressed for pity, cursing her loneliness, was also part of the plan. Surely, by inviting her to the wedding, the traitors had also planned something insidious. Perhaps someone would be attracted to the rights of the apartment while Lisa, swallowing tears, would offer words of congratulations. After all, her friend knew exactly that she still had the jewels. Though Lisa never disclosed where in the house she placed the stash, Lisa chose not to go to the police about the theft of the money. After all, Karina technically had a power of attorney. And there was no doubt that with a very real signature. The mastermind replaced the lock on the door. The girl felt a little more relaxed. Yet she couldn't completely let her guard down. She decided to take advantage of her insomnia for her own good. Lisa pondered her attire. Aiming for a stunning look at the wedding where she had been grievously betrayed. Without hesitation. Even before office hours. She appeared at the secret agency's office eager to unravel the mystery. Following the clues from the vigilant guard near the turnstile, she located the door bearing a recent acquaintance's name. A firm knock. And she entered. Before Samson could disclose the information she had unearthed, Lisa admitted. You were right. Dennis received instructions from my supposed best friend. Who? Incidentally, Siphoned money from my account with my unwitting consent. I signed all the papers my fiancé handed me, my fault. Simeon affirmed. Yes. I spoke to Karina's cousin. Victor. 
He seemed like the unwitting pawn in this scheme. Used underhandedly. His primary role was to intimidate anyone claiming to be your grandfather. Observing Lisa's surprise. Simeon clarified. It was a meticulously staged performance. Karina had basic information about your family. They hired an actor to play Mr. Gerald. Ensuring no risk of exposure through old photographs. The wedding exclusion was probably just to mock him. And you caught them off guard. Lisa nodded in agreement. Saying. I reached similar conclusions. I have a few lingering questions. Though. Why would my closest friend. Who stood by me in my darkest moments. Suddenly betray me like this. Samson suggested. Perhaps it's the common motives, jealousy or greed. Those usually drive most crimes. Lisa's face registered surprise. And she added. It can't be greed. Our families were equally modest. As for jealousy. It wasn't me she envied. It was the reverse. I envied her normal family life after losing mine. Maybe this is her way of getting back at me. Uncertain. Lisa continued. I don't know what to think. I'm hurting from all of this. One thing is certain, I'll attend the wedding. If only to confront Dennis and seek clarity on why they treated me so harshly. The assistant detective chimed in. Dennis's motives are quite evident. Motivated by insurmountable debt and fueled by a relentless ambition. Dennis. A mediocre lawyer. Resorted to dubious practices in his hometown. His departure from the city didn't extinguish his nefarious tendencies. He swindled several ladies. Ostensibly getting engaged and extracting money under false pretenses. A confrontation at a local clinic exposed his volatile temper. As he emptied his pockets for rehabilitation. Now. Back on the prowl for wealth. Samson assured Lisa they would fight to reclaim her dance studio and money. Don't raise the alarm just yet. Samson advised. We'll ensure Dennis and Karina don't slip away. I want them to answer for their actions fairly. Lisa expressed gratitude for Samson's swift efforts. Marveling at the wealth of information he uncovered in a single day. Despite Dennis's cunning tactics. Lisa decided to hold off on the revelation of his machinations until the wedding. As Lisa contemplated her attire and a suitable companion for the event. Samson assured her that he wasn't suited for a flashy entrance. Preferring to remain inconspicuous. He suggested accompanying her. Emphasizing that his unremarkable appearance would only amplify the surprise for those who underestimated him. Lisa agreed. Acknowledging the tactical advantage of having Samson by her side. Samson. However. Proposed an alternative, finding a more visually striking companion for Lisa. He assured her that even if the plan didn't pan out. He would still accompany her. Lisa. Appreciating the strategic perspective. Agreed to the plan. They decided to meet half an hour before the specified time in the wedding invitation. Finalizing the details and parting ways. Before diving into preparations for her outfit. Lisa made a stop at a needlework store for accessories. With only two weeks to craft a stunning dress. She felt a renewed determination to face the upcoming confrontation with Dennis and Karina. The deadline. While not the most pressing. Still loomed. And the complexity of the plan added to Lisa's nervous anticipation. She had foregone work and missed her classes. Yet the thought of approaching Karina for reconciliation wasn't even a consideration. Lisa found solace in the hopeful notion that the studio might soon be back in her possession. Although her once unwavering belief was now tinged with doubt. She clung to the belief that Samson would be honest with her on the day of Dennis and Karina's wedding. On the day of the event. Lisa truly dazzled. Her flame-like presence was accentuated by a dress adorned with a bold asymmetrical neckline. The painted skirt. 
featuring high slits at the seams. Playfully swayed as she walked. Hinting at a lure without revealing too much. While Lisa was aware of the dress's irresistible allure. Samson's praise added a pleasant touch. In contrast. His quite ordinary attire signaled that her actual companion would be someone else. Her surprise peaked and the assistant detective presented Mr. Henry. The unemployed actor who had once attempted to pass himself off as her grandfather. Apologizing for the past deception. Mr. Henry explained his necessity-driven role. Lisa. Though feeling a familiar anticipation akin to an important performance. Graciously accepted his presence and walked hand in hand with him to the restaurant rented by the schemers. At the entrance. Karina's parents greeted them warmly. The bride's mother. Exuding cordiality. Invited Lisa inside. Expressing joy at her presence. As she ushered them in. She encouraged Lisa to enjoy the festivities and be happy for Karina and her fiancé. Adding a wish for Lisa's own future luck. Lisa struggled through the conversation. Sensing the awkwardness. Her companion. Mr. Henry. Squeezed her hand in reassurance. Karina's father. Admiring Lisa's appearance. Incurred a disgruntled look from his wife. Who hurriedly reminded him of their hostess's directives. Dragging him along. As Lisa and Henry stepped into the banquet hall. She couldn't help but smile upon seeing the frozen expressions on Karina and Dennis. The bride and groom. Mastering their emotions. Waved awkwardly as Lisa and her companion approached. Noticing Lisa's arrival. Karina. With a tinge of concern. Queried Dennis about the presence of the seemingly inebriated guy. She reminded him of the plan that he would receive his owed money and vanish without a trace. Expressing fear that Lisa might have concocted some form of revenge. Karina anxiously clung to Dennis. Dennis. However. Sought to allay her fears. Reassuring her that Lisa probably hadn't uncovered anything serious. He attributed Lisa's presence to her keen visual memory. Speculating that she might have deduced her grandfather's intentional appearance. According to Dennis. Lisa might be attempting to disrupt their joyous day. Demoralize them. And poison their happiness. Attempting to blend in. Lisa and Henry behaved as if nothing was amiss. With the help of the lady hostess. They quickly found their table. Avoiding any undue attention. As they settled in. The anticipation for the unusual party heightened. Lisa observed Karina's anxious glances in her direction and responded with a sweet smile. Keeping the surprise that Samson had orchestrated shrouded in mystery. At the manager's signal. Karina's parents entered the banquet hall. Bearing a grand cake. Signaling the commencement of the festivities. The guests showered congratulations on the newlyweds. With the bride's parents even breaking into a rendition of the celebratory. Do it. Song. An ant from the groom's side added to the revelry by distributing rhyming souvenirs. Ushering in a joyous and eventful party. Lissa's anxiety escalated. But Mr. Henry offered soothing words. As the usher declared their turn to congratulate the newlyweds. Henry whispered to Lisa. Our exit. Leave it to me to speak. And you listen. Be grateful that you discovered the real nature of the former groom's companion in time. Providing gentle support. Lisa took a seat in the middle of the hall. With the mastery of an experienced actor. Mr. Henry didn't require a microphone. His well-tuned voice. Surprisingly unaffected by years of libations. Resonated in every corner of the hall. Ladies and gentlemen. Madam and Mansour. May I suggest we shift our attention to the screen. With those words. The usher dimmed several rows of lamps. Casting the room into darkness. Suddenly. 
to the accompaniment of Mendelssohn's march. Incriminating shots of the groom with other women appeared on the screen. Mr. Henry seamlessly provided brief information about each woman's identity. Dennis. Attempting to dismiss the images as a photo montage. Struggled against the growing seed of doubt. Despite Dennis's attempts to shout down the unexpected revelation and convince everyone of the falseness of the images. The seed of doubt had been planted. Karina seemed completely unaware of her fiancé's unfaithful nature. After the photo of Dennis with Lisa flashed on the screen. Followed by shots of Karina herself. The bizarre movie continued. Revealing the involvement of others. Overwhelmed. Karina slapped Dennis across the face and berated him in front of the gathering. She accused him of deceiving her. Involving her in taking Lisa's dance studio. And profiting from their relationship, Karina expressed her disdain. Questioning why she hadn't suspected his ulterior motive sooner. The display of Dennis's unfaithfulness concluded. And as the lights came on. Samson. Accompanied by the police. Entered the hall. Samson regretfully informed everyone that the festivities would have to cease. As the main culprits were suspected of fraud. Karina's parents rushed to explain there must be a mistake. But the police remained resolute. Dennis and Karina were handcuffed and escorted out. As Karina approached Lisa. The latter questioned her ex-friend about the betrayal. Karina. Fueled by anger. Accused Lisa of always getting everything effortlessly. From first places to inheritances. Drawing attention and admiration even from students. Shocked. Lisa tried to comprehend the depth of Karina's envy. Karina spat angrily. Confessing her long-standing resentment. She admitted attempting to sabotage Lisa's dance performance and even reveling in Lisa's suffering. In handcuffs. Karina tried to lash out at Lisa. But the policeman intervened. Leading the detainee away. Lisa. Left standing in the middle of the hall. Prepared to face her ex-fiancé. Dennis. However. He passed by without acknowledging her. Prompting Lisa to question his shame. When Samson approached. He softly remarked that there is no shame in such people. Following Karina's parents' request. Lisa chose not to file a complaint against her for the money withdrawn. The situation became a valuable life lesson for Lisa making her cautious about dating Samson. It took about three years for Lisa to finally believe in the sincerity of his feelings.